Hey everyone, happy new year. I hope that you all had a really fun and safe night and welcome to the new year to every single one of you. And I want to talk to you about something that's really important, um, which is the missing and murdered indigenous. I've spoken on this before, um, but it's been a little bit. So I figure I need to get back to um, providing a video about that. So the one that's up on your screen right now is actually out of, uh, and I, I may say it wrong, but it's uh, Lumi Nation police issue an alert for this teen last seen in Bellingham. She is a missing indigenous person that an alert has been issued by the Washington State Patrol for Ariel Feliciano. She is 13 and was last seen in Bellingham, according to a news release on the afternoon of December 13th. The at-risk slash missing person alert issued on behalf of Lumi Nation Police says that Feliciano is five foot three, 125 pounds with black hair and brown eyes. She was last seen in Bellingham near Salmon Road and Eagle Ave wearing blue jeans, black hooded sweatshirt and white shoes. And the release asked people to call 911 if they see the young woman. The state's first in the nation statewide alert system for missing indigenous people was signed into law March 31st by Governor Jay Inslee. And that being said, we also, we, we have some good news um, as well. So I have a couple of reports that I need to show you that are actually concerning. Uh, and I think that more attention needs to be brought to it. And then um, I do have a, a, a step, I don't, I don't know if it's good news, but I, I think consider it good news. It's a step in the right direction. Um, when it comes to these missing and murdered indigenous and getting alerts out so that people are aware of it. Okay, I'm gonna show you one other that is also missing. And um, she has been entered as a missing person in the National Crime Information Center database. This is Vanessa Molina. She is 34, five foot one, 170 pounds with brown eyes and shoulder length black hair. And she was last heard from December 16th of 2022. Her vehicle was located at Elzups. I don't know what that is. Like, I mean, I've never uh, been to one or seen one, but I did look it up and it is a convenience store, like a gas station slash convenience store. And Nimitz, also not sure I'm pronouncing that correctly, but um, sh the car was located there on December 16th and was towed by her family on that day. It is unknown what she was last wearing, and please contact the Grants Police Department at 505-287-2985 or the County Regional Dispatch at 505-287-9476 with any information on her whereabouts, and you may remain anonymous. This is out of New Mexico. It doesn't say specifically on here, so if you don't know of, of these areas you would not know that so this is out of new mexico and i have already put up a community post on it as well as i believe i posted it on my facebook group so uh, whichever location is easier for you to share whether share the video or one of those um, locations i i really recommend that you, you know I, I would appreciate it um i'm also going to be putting ariel the one that we just looked at up on community wall on Facebook also. Um, so I'm actually re-recording this because I already did it once and I guess my headset was muted. So um, I'm just re-recording this to get the information out to you guys. Um, also, I'm going to show you this one first. And this is, this is concerning. This is something that really needs to be spread all around is so that it is known what has been going on Adriana, thanks. New at 10, a warning from the Navajo Nation Police Department tonight. Officers are investigating several missing persons reports. It's all traced back to addiction treatment centers. And now they're warning tribal members about unknown recruiters who could be behind it. We're told that these recruiters pick indigenous people up from the Navajo Nation and then drive them hours away to the valley for rehab. But in some cases, they end up missing or stranded hundreds of miles away from home. Team 12's Chase Golightly spoke with two women who claimed that this happened to their loved ones. And Chase, what do we know about this very odd situation? 
Well, Grebe, Mark, the Navajo Police Department tells us they've never seen anything like this before, but have only received more and more calls of this happening. Every day, a new missing persons poster. In Navajo, they say, we have to keep an eye on everybody, and that's what we do. Placed outside this shop of Reva Stewart. Some of those seen here are believed to have been recruited by unregulated rehab centers in the Valley, targeting vulnerable Native Americans. Navajo police say they started noticing it in August. Those in the Navajo Nation being approached by strangers in white vans, offering food, clothes, and rehab treatment if they come with them. They are then driven hours away to Phoenix to be placed in what's described as a pop-up rehab facility. But police say they either end up stranded or missing. She was approached um, walking on the street. It happened to Stewart's cousin in New Mexico. She got in the van. There was, um, she said, for other people. They gave him alcohol. She was allegedly brought to a Phoenix home and was told to sign up for the state's American Indian Health Program, which officials believe is how these centers get their money. When she said no, they let her go. Rode around on the bus trying to figure out how am I going to hitchhike back. Stewart found her cousin and took her home safely. I have a sister that was also trafficked. But for Colleen Chatter's sister. And she passed while she was in that sober living home. Now both are fighting to spread awareness of what is happening. They say they are seeing those vans in the streets of Phoenix. They would stop at the bus stop, talk to somebody, go to the next bus stop, talk to somebody. Calling for the state to investigate these so-called group homes. They need to actually go in and start auditing, you know, where are these individuals coming from? Where are they staying? To prevent more of these posters. Become aware of what's happening to your people. These are our loved ones. Now, some state lawmakers and the FBI is aware of this situation, telling us they're working with the Navajo Nation on this. And if anyone has information on those responsible, to reach out to their tip line. We're live in the Alert Center. Chase Golightly, 12 News. Chase, thanks. Isn't that concerning? Sorry, it took a second to get back. I'm dealing with this, uh, whatever my computer issue is. Um, but yeah, that's really concerning. And I, I hope that the word gets out. I also wonder how long it's been going on. How long has this been happening and nobody was aware? Or outside of the indigenous, I, I mean, I don't know. Obviously they weren't aware either. Really awful, awful. And to prey on them is sick. Right, because we do know there's a lot of addiction issues that happen within the, um, really on like reservations, but just, you know, indigenous, there, there is a, a uh, issue with, with addiction. And so to use that as a way of like, hey, I'm gonna offer you help, but in fact, it's, that's just awful. It's awful. So here, I'm going to share this with you. This is about the epidemic of the missing and murdered indigenous in North Dakota. The issue of missing and murdered indigenous people has been a crisis for decades. The silent plague is affecting thousands of indigenous women and men across the country. Adrian Oglesby spoke with members of one organization doing everything they can to raise awareness and bring their people home. It's the ones with advocates that get found. It's the ones without advocates that don't. For decades, Native American and Alaska Native communities have struggled with high rates of assault, abduction, and murder of women. Community advocates describe the crisis as a legacy of generations, government policies of forced removal, land seizures, and violence inflicted on Native people. To search and rescue leader Nogaji Win, this is an epidemic. We were established in 2018. Uh, by a group of people who recognize the epidemic of uh, missing and murdered peoples and that something needed to be done. We needed to put something out there um, to help advocate for victims and their families and um, 
to show that there was people that cared. The Highway of Tears, or what Wynn calls, quote, murder highway, instantly became a symbol for unchecked violence against indigenous women and girls. Many First Nations women and girls have been murdered or disappeared from here and still are missing, he says. It comes through North Dakota. It comes all the way from uh, Minnesota, from Canada, through the Dakotas, through Oklahoma, through Texas, uh, and Arizona, New Mexico, and it goes back up into California. And that highway lies on and, on and around a lot of reservations. With over 38,000 friends on Facebook, the organization has a number of supporters and followers beyond each chapter. But a repost of a missing persons poster is not all that they do. Drones and dog teams a lot because with the drone, we can search bigger areas. We can search areas faster. Um, we can get into areas that are normally hard to go into. It's important to note that with no grants, most resources like drones come from out-of-pocket costs. A number of investigations remain unsolved, often due to a lack of investigative resources available to identify new information. But here in North Dakota, there is an epidemic due to the, the lack of resources that those communities have. Um, and with the searches, it's harder in those areas um, due to the lack of resources that they have. Really, the tribes in which these groups belong to or in their district need to step up and write resolutions for these chapters to help fund these chapters. Because it's an overwhelming epidemic that most of these nations don't have the manpower or the equipment to assist. And so these chapters pick that up and help from searching to investigations. According to the Office of the Attorney General, there are currently 92 people missing in North Dakota. Out of that number, 33 are indigenous people, which make up 35.86% of our state's missing numbers. Reporting for KX News, I'm Adrian Oglesby. And Wynn says their organization will search for anyone. He says if you see something, say something, no matter how big or small. To learn more about their organization, search for a chapter or to create your own, you can visit kxnet.com. Yeah, so the, the Highway of Tears, um, that has been an issue for so long, and I, I don't know what's being done in order to, you know, to, to put a stop, to slow down what's happening, what, what's going on with the it's just, it's terrible. Um, I don't know. But, but the fact that it goes right from like Minnesota, it starts with Canada and then it's like Minnesota, the Dakotas, Oklahoma, Texas, Arizona, and then New Mexico and then California. I mean, that's, that's, that's horrific. Absolutely horrific. People wonder why these numbers are so high in these states when it comes to indigenous and mm, it's, it's not a good, it's not good. Um, however, I do have good news that I'm going to tell you right now. So this is actually um, positive good news. And so as I had read um, earlier about the alert system starting in March, uh, we have another state that has begun doing an alert system as well. And so, like I said, that's progress and it's moving us in the right direction of of hopefully getting the word out to people about these indigenous, because I mean, that's one of the many, many, many issues with this is the fact that it, it, the alerts, there are no alerts, right? No one, no one knows that they're missing uh, to be looking for them. And as that person said in that video, the people with advocates get found, the people without do not. I mean, it's, it's the proof is in the pudding, right? Um, one way of saying it. Uh, I don't know what, there's a video here, but it's really long and it's all these different news things. So we're just going to read this one. Uh, but it says that, it says that it becomes the first, Colorado becomes the first state. It's not the first, but it's one of the first, right? So Colorado becomes one of the first states to roll out an alert system for the missing indigenous people. The alerts went live December 30th and are part of the same legislation that created a statewide office and liaison for missing or murdered indigenous relatives. Quote, all of our relatives have been murdered and not found buried. 
said Daisy Blue Star with the Missing and Murdered Indigenous Relatives Task Force of Colorado. She has lost her own family members to the cold case files, but she calls all Indigenous victims her family or relatives, right? Uh, quote, the Native American community has the highest rate for murders and missing people. That is absolutely a fact. Many of those victims don't get justice. The Bureau of Indian Affairs estimates there are over 4,000 unsolved Indigenous missing and murdered cases. Just weeks ago, a pregnant Indigenous woman, Mariana Nikki, right, uh, Birch Woodhall, was killed in Southern Colorado. And this is a picture of her. Um, the first night it got reported, the police didn't take it seriously, Blue Star said. She had been missing for five days, and within those five days, the very first night that she had been missing was the night that she was murdered. Blue Star and the task force put up missing posters for Woodhall. Throughout Indian America, we use Facebook and we use paper, and we use those old techniques of looking for our people, she said. Now, Blue Star hopes an alert system that she advocated for will bring more families justice. Our legal system, the police, it's going to apply pressure to make sure that they step up the minute that they get a missing person report. Starting Friday, the Colorado Bureau of Investigation now issues alerts for missing Indigenous persons, similar to those for missing seniors or endangered missing people. The alerts will go out to the public through law enforcement, media, and CDO team message signs. If the missing person is an abducted child, an AMBER alert will be sent out. We get the alert systems uh, we get the alert system to our phone or to the news. Uh, I feel like things are going to be taken more seriously. The alert feature, the missing person's picture, the alerts feature the missing person's picture, name, and description, along with any other relevant details in which law enforcement agencies um, to contact if, if you know any information. And the alerts won't automatically pop up on your phone like an Amber Alert. The alert instantly goes to an all Colorado law enforcement, while media and the public can sign up for email alerts. Now, <clears throat> to receive alert notifications, email CDPS, and then it says CBI, missing at state.co.us. Right, I don't know. And so I'm going to give it a try, right? I'm going to um, go to this. Hopefully, this is accurate and right. And I'm going to request it. It's kind of, I wish it didn't have to be that way. I still feel like how many people are going to take the initiative to actually sign up? It just should be put out. Just put it out, right? I don't, why? Why is it going to be hunted and searched for? It's a little frustrating. But at least something is being done. And I am going to try to get the notification. And then that way I would be able to put the information out to all of you if any um, alerts come in. So. Anyways, I will keep you posted on that and uh, anything new that does come out. I, I do hold the missing and murdered indigenous um, epidemic very, it just, it weighs a lot on me. Um, I feel a connection and, and I feel it's really important that somebody, um, as many people as possible that, that try to help with these cases and put out the information, do it. And so um, it's been a bit since I have put out any videos or anything. And, and I, I just felt that I really needed to get, get back on it. So um, I just wanted to <clears throat> let you know, but I will keep you posted and I will talk to you all in my next video. Have a good one.